a shocking game. Yeah. And everyone has shocking games every now and again, so I think that they will be able to run this one back. And I also don't think you can read as much into Splice's victory as people seem to be doing. You know, normally Gam does bring this hectic, you know, all-in-your-face style. But what they ran against Splice was a zero-engage, strange melee, yeah. weird comp that they weren't able to execute on. Yeah, sure, Splash throughout the game, they punished them, they beat them handily. But I think that was as equal to the Marines' fault as Splice playing well. Yeah, it's definitely fair to say, you know, maybe they should have drafted more engage or whatever, but at the same time, you know, we can't we can't fault Splice for their opponent's yeah, mistakes, absolutely. right? And I think Splice uh, thus far has kind of checked all the boxes you can ask, and I'm really excited to see how well they can perform here against Fun Plus, because if you take down them, then really, Splice could easily be taking top of the table in this group, and I think that is a very exciting prospect for all of the LEC fans. Stop selling my LMS boys J team short, man. <laughs> There's no way are they the favorites if they win this game. However, hey, they could go too. I do think that they have got a really great draft so far for what yeah, they're being I was going to say, guys, there has been a draft that's been happening this entire time. Fun Plus Phoenix on our blue side here as they are going to lock in the Kaiser and a lot of LPL fans have now clinched just Ooh. a little bit because we have the shotgun back on forward and LWX certainly did not look like the greatest performer in their previous game. But can they now about face and fix this one and give LWX a chance to show us exactly what he's capable of? Yeah, and that's what we're going to have to find out. But Doan be locking in his rise. This is something he is famous for in the LPL, but it's much more about the side lane play for him. He is a guy who really popularized the righteous glory on the rise, going with things like the Rylas as well, more utility to be in the face of their opponents, chasing them down a the side lane, a little bit of a added tankiness there as well. So certainly, will be really exciting to see him bringing it out here today. And while, ooh, right, sorry, go. I said whilst we were talking about, you know, the fact that he is back on the Kaiser, domestically, he was a very good Kaiser player. Once again, I don't want us to be too overreactionary to this pickup because I think that a lot of LPL fans would actually be like, this is a perfect draft. We've gotten rid of Zaya, we've got Kaiser for ourselves. This is the best AD carry for LWX to play that shotgun play style. Yeah, as far as I know, th yesterday actually, well, his first game at Worlds was his first loss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on it, right? He was, I believe, 10 and 0 coming into Worlds on the Kaisa. So certainly, you know, that is his bread and butter. Uh, and we'll have to see if he can perform well here today. Well, the respect for Crisp is coming in as the Alistair and the Blitzcrank both banned away. So far, it's been Ming of the Chinese supports that's really liked the Blitzcrank. In fact, in 100% of his games, he's picked that one up as FPX going to be targeting that AD carry position. It's going to be the Jin and the Ezreal taken away from Kobe as we're going to look towards the fourth pickup. I do want to talk about Splice here just a little bit because Xerxes, fantastic on the Gragas. Vizachachi, we know, very shallow champion pool, but one of those champions is definitely the Gangplank. They are very happy with what they have at the moment, and Tristana locked in. A lot of flexibility now for Splice. Yeah, it certainly is. And, you know, while you would normally think of Tristana as kind of the solo lane pick, regionally at least, Splice did use it as a bot laner there for Kabe, so I would be interested to see is it actually going to be a flex pick for them, or will it simply be that bottom lane pick? And Leona, a pretty bold choice, I have to say, into Thresh. I do think if Norse Karen is on point, you can flay out a lot of the Zenith Blades and deny some of these potential all-ins, which could make it difficult uh, for that Leona to really find a lot of success. And I do think that that is similar to the uh, matchup that you see against Nautilus. However, what we saw yesterday when Mickey picked up the Leona okay. was a masterclass in how to take over one of those games. And this is an old school counter pick if this is mid lane Viga. However, wow. could potentially still be in the 80 carry position. Yeah, Baby Cage and Box actually very similar size. So kind of fun for controlling space. I got nothing to say to that. But what do you mean? <laughs> well, it's going to be mid, I, I am expecting. Uh, as I said, Kabe, trish, uh, traditionally the Tristana player for the team, um, but not even just in the rise, which it is a great pick into. I just think, you know, when you're looking over at the Fun Plus composition, short range AD, three melee champions, rise is relatively short range as well, and that just complicates so many of the team fights when you are trying to dive forward. Uh, it's so much protection there for the Tristana as well as that Gangplank, and it is, in fact, actually going to be the Vagar bot there for Kobe. Thankfully, I get to see my Event Horizon and Box combination earlier on into this game, as it is going to be Kobe picking up that Vigas. So far, we have seen Vigas played in the carry position on the bottom side of the map thus far. The thing I like about Fun Plus Phoenix's composition is that there's damage coming out from multiple areas, so it's not just going to be all about LWX as we get into our third game of the day.
Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Summoner's Rift for FPX versus Splice. The Chinese number one seed, FPX, really did get the hearts of so many fans over in the LPL with their unique style. But now Splice, they make their way up through the planes. They narrowly make it in after a bout against UOL that took them the whole distance. Now trying to escape from that 0-1 scoreline. And I think that FPX have recognized some of the deficiencies in their comp. As you were pointing out, getting into this game, Atlas, some more damage there to be able to play what has been a more spread out meta and unwillingness of teams to be able to move and fight you at times. However, I do want to talk about the control on the splice comp. I always talk about this, but when you have something else that is good as disengaged with Gragas, you have so many options in being able to go forward and backwards in these compositions. The reason I value... Hold the thought. Yeah, Tiang could search for a Q, but Humanoid's going to be able to walk away. Okay, the reason I value Greg is so high is because he has one of the best abilities of going forward and backwards in these compositions. And I think you were hitting on it as AL, but the range of the Tristana, coupled with a Thresh, coupled with a Vyga, is going to make Humanoid so hard to deal with as this game progresses. It certainly is, but where I'm kind of most interested is, you know, with this exhaust rise, you know, traditionally you think of Dombey's rise as kind of that side lane split push threat. You know, will he still be able to feel confident to be going to the side lanes, not bringing TP? Because you would want to say, Rise wins the 1v1 against GP at pretty much all stages. You certainly can win the 1v1 in the side lane against a Tristana. Gimgoon looking like he's winning the 1v1 against Vizichachi at the moment. But after the minions have got their word in, it's going to be pretty even. Continue. I agree with you, and I think additionally, given the fact that we've seen Doimbi build into Righteous so often, and he is going to be against double AD solo lane, so that build will make a lot of sense. What I was going to mention with the heavy trading in the top lane is the fact that this pretty much invites jungle intervention early, and I like the path that Xerxes has gone for that. He's been able to pick himself up. He's blue buff moving towards the top side of the map, just shadowing Chachi up there and making sure that this is going to be an isolated one within one. And the sustain from Gangplank through Grass, through that Corrupting Potion and Biscuits makes this form a trade pattern really nice for the Gangplank early. Yeah, I completely agree, right? You know, when you're trading out that, that class charge for Health Potion, that is great for the Gangplank. And if Renekton ever loses control of that minion wave, it starts to get really difficult to farm because you're getting farmed out by these Grass procs, but a nice hook here. Yeah, Max Range Hook, right. Dark Matter comes down, Crisp Half Health, absolutely fine though. Th that's what I was going to say, because it's all about the trading pattern. When you trade as a Gangplank, it's just a single target ability that gives you the health back. When you're an X and you have to play in the wave, you have to be able to use that Q on the champion, but as well as the minions to be able to sustain yourself up. And you can see now he's pushing, and Xerxes yeah. here. Fantastic positioning, the flash forward from Gang oh. just gets first blood solo! That's how you escape the gang, because he's not going to escape it for too long, but still, you'll take those. Yeah, certainly will. You know, the only problem here is his wave is not in a great spot. That's a full HP cannon. Uh, unfortunately for Vizichachi, that minion does get into to the wave there and into the turret. But, you know, Gimgoon now is kind of pressured to actually go back and TP. It is going to be a 2v2 as they meet in the mid lane here. The Sonic Wave is going to connect as Humanoid flashes, but doesn't get far enough. Teleport in now from X FPX as they are trying to commit. But Xerxes with the body slam with the flash gets himself towards his top laner and to relative safety. And FPX fans would have big smiles already, that early game proactivity. And we mentioned the fact that, you know, top lane is frozen, but now Humanoid's wave is just destroyed. It's going to be eaten by that turret. Take another look at this first blood. This is just Gimgoon understanding that he's probably in threat and he needs to trade aggressively if he's going to win out on this. Yeah, I completely agree. Visit Chachi, it seemed like he was trying to bait that for the Gragas, but underestimating perhaps the limits of that Renekton, and you know, had this mid lane scuffle not actually occurred, this pulls Gragas down, which allows you know the safety of knowing you can go back to that top lane. But this is just a nice play here from Do and B and Tien, who is, in my opinion, probably the best LPL jungler this year. Someone who certainly has not gotten a lot of attention internationally yet. Yeah, absolutely agree with you. And I do want to talk about maybe a damage miscalculation because we've seen a lot of Conquerors being built on Renekton. However, this is press the attack. So maybe just not used to kind of the damage calc that was coming across there. It was just a slither of health that did mean that Chachi fell down. Yeah, we need to talk about Tien's um, uh, Lee Sin as well. His Lee Sin has been legendary, even in uh, their match against... Uh, King's own at Rift Rivals, it was so exciting. His Lee Sin plays were absolutely outstanding. Really exciting to see, and this is exciting as well. As Humanoid down towards the bottom side, the man in question is forced underneath this turret. The baby cage is beautiful. The double play back, and they're executed as Splice, a gorgeous turret dive. 
They're not even done yet now as Crisp underneath here, and he's just getting baited around all too easily taken down as Splice with four members. Very comfortable under the turret. Turn off the nameplates and tell me which team is which, because that is an FBX play. The four-man bot dive was their bread and butter throughout the LPL all year long, and Splice making it happen. That was beautiful use of that box from the Vagar. Yeah, Doinby now heading top lane. However, I do want to say that that's another clanger from LWX. He flashed into the body slam. Hold the thought, however. Yeah, looking for a dive here. The teleport going to come in from Splice to try and defend their top laner. Vizichachi still looking for it as Doinby. Turret shot is going to follow him. Does have that AoE damage, of course, when you do get that spell flux down, but isn't going to get baited in. Just trying to clear out some minions and Splice do ease the tension as we have a look at the replay of the bot lane dive. So you already know this is happening because you have the Predator and LWX flashing over the baby cage is so much damage guaranteed now by the Graggers. I've got to say though, that's damned if you do, damned if you don't because he flashed the hook and if you get hit by that hook, I think you are doomed no matter what. So then save the summoner spell yeah. so you can lane for the next five minutes because right now that is now the most repeatable play in Hit League of Legends. You've got flash available on Norska and you have it available on Kobe. They can guarantee both forms of CC now, and LWX, he's in big trouble. Yeah, possible flash cages available now for Kobe if he wants them. He'll be checking in with that bottom lane relatively soon as Doinby makes his way back mid. The phase rush online on this rise, able to catch up with people during this mid game. We'll see whether FPX is going to be able to get that one done as Tian makes his way towards the top side. Vizichachi ults the wave. He now can't use it as Tian just completely throws the Q away. And that's going to allow Vizichachi to survive as Crisp now just hanging around in the cage is going to survive. Thankfully, the duration of the Eclipse going to be helpful as Norskarin searching for a Q, but not even going to look for it. Does have the flay there on LWX, but can't get any damage. I mean, that was just a terrible Q from Tien, honestly. You know, there's no flash on Vizichachi. You know that there's not there. So, yes, he's going to be able to pop his orange when he does get stunned up. Uh, slight delay there. And, and that's really what you're looking for, even just leading him by a bit to, at the very least, force him to turn back into the Renekton. And once again, I would love to draw everyone's attention down into the bottom side of the jungle because this is Humanoid once again getting priority, pushing in to the bottom portion of the map. And that means the structure is coming under fire. Yeah, so I'm going to jump all all the way in, it's humanoid in fact, as Doinby is going to get shut up. The explosive charge is going to go off and not going to find too much, but they do get the exhaust out from humanoid. If you're a, an FPX fan, this is a very concerning game. I mean, Splice are just dominating. You know, this sort of a lead this early on with the composition that they have, the Vagar, the Gangplank, as well as the Justana, all scale incredibly well. Splice is dominating the map eight minutes in. And it's in the bottom side, you know, this is an area that we expect FPX to just have an outright advantage. We talk about Kobe, we talk about his consistency, his ability to team fight, but we don't normally talk about the fact that he's going to take three plates in eight minutes on Viger. So, I mean, this is just a complete turnaround performance from what we've been seeing from this team. And it also looks like a little bit of a mental explosion on LWX's side. You can see second lowest gold in the entire game. Hasn't really found himself after a disappointing first game. You mentioned Isaac, he's very comfortable on this pick, but hasn't been able to transition it to the world stage is now FPX setting themselves up for a dive on the top side of the map. Vizichachi knows exactly what's going on. The kickback, that Q's going to land as Doinby should be able to grab the kill, but it's Gimgoon delivered it on the Renekton. And why is everyone burning Flash when they're dead? That's another summoner spell where there is no way Chachi is living. They all have Flash be able to follow up and chase him down after the fact. I think that these weak side plays have just been very lackluster so far from these teams. Yeah, certainly the case. And, uh, you know, he is going to go down. It is going to be FPX taking some plates up here on the top side, but definitely not all bad for Splices. They take the Dragon. They will get first turret here still. You know, Xerxes able to take away some of the jungle camps here on that bottom side. So They've Splice. got so many plates, guys. All the plates going to be taken on the bottom side as Splice do manage to take that first turret. And Humanoid's been getting a hell of a lot of work done in that mid lane. Only two plates remain over there as well. The top side, they've still got five and a half minutes in order to get there as FPX will be able to take down their first turret of the game. However, bottom lane is pushing back to Splice right now. So CS is being lost on the map. If you are FPX, you're not farming all three waves. That is shared gold amongst three carries. And you have to say the isolated gold onto Humanoid as well as Kobe at this stage is certainly beneficial. Not only are they 1,500 gold in the lead, but the specific carries they're on is probably accelerating them to maybe not where you would expect them to be at this early start of the game. Yeah, the Hextech GLP also, you know, coming through here for Kabe, and, and that is really where 
uh, this Vagar pick starts to really turn on, right? You have a, such an incredibly large slow with that. It's not every day you see a support soloing out the, the yeah. scuttler there. Uh, but you can start to really set up your own cages, right? You hit them with the slow, you walk forward with that glacial augment, you're often able to force summoners, you're able to force cooldowns coming out uh, because they aren't otherwise able to escape the cage. And whilst being small in stature, with the magical footwear, he's a speedy little bugger as well. <laughs> he just runs towards you. He can't really get away. He's trapped as a leprechaun this time around. But I do like the topside control from Splice. They've been able to get so much done on the bottom side of the map. They have Gangplank's ultimate available once again. So setting up around the Herald, especially with the priority they've been able to gain over mid lane and top lane, means this should be a free objective. Yep, Splice going to be able to confirm that one for you there, Spawn. Should be able to push them ahead also because, like you were talking about, this game just feels so accelerated. It means these plates still going to be available for another four minutes. Sorry, three minutes. I tell a lie, but still quite a lot of time to get Shelly in the right spot to get as much money as possible. And it looks like that is going to be top side of the map for Splice. Yeah, it really is. And at any time, honestly, as Splice, when you have you know, a Renekton and a GP kind of low on farm, but trading farm on the opposite side, the GP is going to be favored pretty heavily in that. And we've seen Vizichachi multiple times now dropping the ultimate to just clear out waves, buying time for his squad to get more up on that top side. Look at this. It's just so many plates being taken. There's only three left on the map for Splice to even get. As far as an acceleration of game pace, this is ludicrous. And it's coming from the team that has an infinite scaling bottom lane AP carry and a Tristana. Just insane as we have an attack into the mid lane as well as Humanoid going to be taken down. Crisp trying to get his say as now Doinby takes a plate for himself. And a good response play here. However, Doinby does need to be able to get out. Yeah. Will he be able to get into his realm? What? The answer is no, but flashes to safety over that wall. Going to expend the summoner spell to keep himself alive, and FPX are going to be able to take down this outer turret bot side of the map as well. However, fairly nicely navigated there from Doyen, but you would take that. It is going to be a flash for flash trade, and he is able to pull over the attention. Now the goal does become, however, can you keep this mid lane turret up? We've spoken about how important it can be, but I feel like if Splice get the mid lane turret, they will just be able to press into the jungle and create any fight they want at this stage of the game. Yeah, it is certainly the case, but you know, getting that kill on Humanoid does kind of push back the clock on that a little bit. and. You know, Humanoid certainly is going to want that one back. Had the Buster shot to perhaps deny the Zenith Blade. Had the Flash available to try to avoid the ultimate. So certainly was the ability there uh, for him to dodge out on that. But you know, not able to pull it off and does go down. And I think this is a strength of we're seeing of Leona. Out of Fog of War, her chain CC individually is just so oppressive to be able to deal with. Multiple times yesterday, Mickey didn't even allow the Nautilus to get the Aftershock off with, through an auto attack before he was blown up. And I think that's another one of those situations where you think you have top side control but the gank was very successful. LWX going to reposition towards this mid lane as we crest the 13 minute mark. Norskrin coming on down here. Can fake out with a lantern to make sure that he gets them out of the way, but it looks like we do have a 1-3-1 style of composition working out here on the splice side. You can see there's a charger just moving towards top side. And Humanoid gravitating towards the bottom waves. Yeah, and while I think, you know, Splicer are happy to sit in the side lanes for now, eventually this team comp is going to want to group up, right? You know, that is where they are most successful. GP can hold waves, but they are not going to win this game, you know, through side lane pressure, whereas I think there's going to be more pressure on Doombi to be getting things done with that. But because he's not playing teleport, it becomes incredibly risky, right? You know, you see Doombi showing up on the top side as the dragon spawns. Well, guess what? That splices for free. They know that there's no chance of a contest. So, you know, especially once you get past that 20-minute mark, Without teleport, you're often in pro play, just forced to stick with your team. However, he is going to be able to generate a lot of kill threat for himself, and I think that's how he has to play the game. He's the one member on his lineup that isn't set significantly behind, is equal with his counterpart, and needs to be able to have a classic doing the game of being able to facilitate plays through very fast rotations and creative use of that Rise Ultimate, because I agree, it doesn't go as far. But at this stage, you can see topside control, maybe a play onto Viagra, something like that, is still available. Yep, and going be going to be able to steal away the red buff pretty comfortably as well. So he's going to get over that wall, get himself out of any trouble. And in fact, he wasn't in any trouble to begin with. See whether this rise is going to be exactly that carry that you were talking about already with the Seraph's Embrace transformation complete. See what those the next item is going to be. It will be a very late Rod of Ages if it is indeed going to be one as the Zenith Blade actually blocked by the Event Horizon. 
As FPX hold onto that turret, but someone's got to breathe on it on Splice's side to take that one down. And maybe the first time ever that you've been like, thank goodness for Event Horizon as Leona, because otherwise <laughs> he was zooming into the enemy team there. Definitely would have fallen down, I feel. You can see they really want this turret. Well, there's the Solar Flare. Does get the stun there onto Xerxe, but... Once again, another Event Horizon is going to be working out as Tian's going to take that one. The box now comes in. The zone controls there as LWX once again presses the R button quite early, but this time it's going to work out. The shutdown, but the Event Horizon's there. The barrel is stunning right into the waiting arms of Splice, and they even it all out. And you can see just how strong that zone control is for Splice. Not only the Event Horizon, but the Glacial Augment, and now Doan B locked in here as well. Kabe playing it out very, very well on this mage pot. And that was a genuine 4v5. Gangplank didn't even rotate into the fight, just dropped the ultimate, created another zone, and now he's continuing to farm up. You can see that he's 22 CS above his counterpart. And as we take another look at this, this is just why you cannot come from one direction versus this team. Because the amount of zone control available for the Viger and the inability to dash through it, not to mention the flay. The Gangplank Ultimate, the box, there's just so many tools to successfully disengage. I mean, even the slow, look at LWX trying to disengage away from that while slowed up by the Glacial Augment. He can barely move. And then the cage comes back up again, a nice alt in, and the shutdown going over to Kabe, who is very, very rich at this point in the game. You know, richest member sitting at 7,700 gold ahead, 2,500 up on LWX. Glad we got to see it tick over to 7777 as well. That was very, very cool. But Noskarin also played that last fight about as optimally as you possibly could as the one person on the team that died, right? He managed to buy so much time, so much space, waited for that Event Horizon cooldown and delivered the top laner over to Splice. Really beautiful stuff from a man that has had a bit of criticism recently. Yeah, I certainly agree with you. And I think that on the one, ooh, hold the thought, Possible fight going to come in here is the face check from Humanoid. Not quite enough damage for the 100% from Tien, but he is going to get that safeguard. Buster shot, but trades! Lands that Q! That was a beautiful one! And the FPX jungler's going to get it. Doinby also picks up an assist, but that was all Tien as we do get the root. But the rest of Splice are going to come in. Doinby trying to be that one-man army. The box is down, the event horizon in. The space trying to be controlled, but Doinby doesn't care. Now Tien finds Visa Chachi as crisp. He's going to get on top as well. Doinby's distracted, looking for the pirate, but oh, takes the land. Oh. And the Void Seeker is going to be blocked by the minion wave. Splice narrowly avoid disaster. Yeah, Doan be flexing those muscles, showing off the righteous glory here for the first time, catching up to Humanoid, taking him down, and then just straight up fighting his way out of what looked like it was going to be a great TP flank from Visitachi. And because of the way Ryzer's kits work, you know, the repetitive shields, the fact that you have so much mana for the Saras, he is so deceptively tanky at this stage of the game with the Mercury Treads, with that Righteous Glory. You can see they did not want to prioritize him, but he just 1v3s the back end of the fight. Is it able to, re to create so much distance for everyone else to be able to turn on Chachi? Yeah, and this is the Doinby build at work as we have a look at the face check one more time. Tien playing this about as perfectly as you can. Yeah, at least. certainly did. However, I'm not sure. I agree with kicking him towards a wall when you have a ward available but from this point actually we're not going to see the rest of it it was all about doing be being able to turn around with that machine gun rise well now splice is going to try and reset this map you can see they have about a thousand gold lead which is approximately nothing ladies and gentlemen see where the fpx can pull things back it is a three turrets to two so as far as control of the map splice are going to be ahead However, whilst we've been talking about the fact that Splice had this individual, uh, this team-wide lead, Doinby as an individual is now 50 CS up over his counterpoint. Whilst he can't join every fight, majority of action has been around him so far, and I expect him to continue to play that top side of the map and control the area. I definitely do, and I think that's why it's going to be up to Splice to fight away from Doinby, right? You attack the other side of the map, knowing he doesn't have the teleport. Park Gangplank, allow him to drop ultimates defensively, allow him to just be the one to wave clear, and try to stay away from that rise, because if he is not in the fight, Splice are massively ahead. Well, Splice are going to move on to this Mountain Drake as well, flexing like you say. Their advantage is Tien's going to land a Q, but he's going to get hit by the hook. Just destroyed where he stands. The rest of Splice able to get out of there, but do they even want to as they're winning this fight? Solar Flare is decent, but Humanoid says goodbye, Leona. And Kim Goon has to run the hell out of the way. Humanoid says no as he flashes after him. The exhaust is going to come in. 
and now the crocodile gets into fog of war, but he's not going to save himself from the death chamber. Xerxes, cool guys, don't look at explosions as he turns him into a handbag. And once again, it is the zone control of the splice comp reigning supreme. You can see the layering of CC, the inability to get in onto that backline, and the superior range of Tristana, just unstoppable in these fights. Yeah, it was what it looked like a, a clever engage there from FPX as they sent Crispin to the backline, utilizing Doombi's ultimate, but Tien on the other side. You know, it's supposed to be this pincer move, right? Where Chris was coming in from the back, but Tien gets hooked up and just absolutely exploded before he can do much of anything. LWX is slowed by the Glacial Augment on the outside of the fight and really just cannot get there to dish out the damage. Both Doimbi and LWX were limping towards the members of Splice. But you can see the power of New Riser's kit and the ability to team fight on this champion. Previously, it would have taken two iterations of that Q to spread the flux. It was forcing multiple flashes away from the uh, zone of the team fight because otherwise, Toynbee's damage would have been so much higher. Well, we'll see whether Toynbee can get it back because a thousand damage isn't going to do it. This might. This visit charge takes a bit there as Tian's going to find Xerxes but has to safeguard to get himself. Over the wall, Baron now on the minds of Splice as they're 2,000 gold in the lead and they have a hell of a lot of damage. However, you do now have a small window where you have teleport advantage and it is actually going to be the Renekton able to put out a lot of side lane pressure. So I'm interested to see how Splice respond to that. Right now, it looks like a push down mid lane. Yep, and now Kobe with the Spooky Ghosts. He's got the Super Soaker. He has his timepiece as well. He's got all the activatable items that you want as this Glacial Augment Viga. It's so difficult to close the distance on this guy. Also so hard to sneak up on him because of those ghosts that rock it out. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and it feels like for now, you know, FPX are the ones kind of feeling the pressure to be engaging. And anytime you're going to be engaging, it just makes the Vigorous drop so easy. You know, utilizing that box defensively is much easier than it is to kind of find the offensive picks, even though you can still do it uh, with that Glacial Augment. And Splice is just pulling further and further ahead. Now over 3,000 gold up. They have three dragons to nothing. And they are working towards, you know, this kind of late game stage. And they've taken everything they want for now. I mean, soon the responsibility will pass to Humanoid. And Humanoid is so much of a reason why I feel like Splice have such a terrific early game. Hold the thought, are they going to go for this one? They have cheated members over. However, it does look like Recall is going to complete here. And yep. so if Humanoid does get one more item, he gets that Rapid Fire Cannon, all of a sudden, Sieging becomes a breeze on this composition. You just set Humanoid up as your turret. You defend him with your multiple boxes, as you were saying yes. before the game. Or and no one can engage on, on it. Yeah, it's, it's really the case. I mean, it, it's so easy to just walk up to the turret. You drop a box kind of on slash behind the turret. They have to back up. You have Lantern on your Tristana, who has incredibly long range. There's really very few ways to actually uh, be able to find that sort of an engage. I'm really getting confused about which box you're talking about as well as FPX trying to get <laughs> out of one box into the other. As now the engage has started. Chris with a beautiful Zenith Ooh. play. Finds the Solar Flare as well. Out of nowhere is Toynbee's damage finally coming to the fore. It's a decent disengage barrel there, but Tian still at half health is going to survive. Kobe, not so lucky. And this time it is the shotgun working, successfully counting out damage abilities, and the prediction from Chris on the ultimate there did allow them to continue the fight. It is only one pick, however, and you can see how hard it is to get onto this splash comp. They have so many disengaged tools. Yeah, they certainly do, and you know, the, the problem is they didn't get anything more, as you're saying, right? You know, you want to try to get that pick and turn it into a Baron, but Splice disengaged so incredibly well that it was never really the possibility, and every moment that passes, it is Humanoid getting closer and closer to those additional items. Okabe is going to respawn, teleports to the mid lane, and now five members of Splice once again are going to be grouped up and FPX are going to back away. And now because there wasn't a tempo reset that came out from Tian as a jungler, Splice feel like they actually have the superior health numbers and can set up for this Baron. It's going to be an approach from the jungle. This is exactly how Splice wants to play the fights. Yeah, it's already down to half health. No killer instinct available as Splice continue to have control of these fights. Event Horizon now on cooldown. FPX with an opportunity, but they're not going to go for it. The Baron going to reset and Splice going to back away for now. Yeah, I think smart call there from Splice with Dombi threatening the flank. It could have been very difficult as you know, the Vagar Cage was down and it could have kind of collapsed from multiple sides. You can see the Rylai now coming through here from Dombi. Again, this is a little bit of his flair showing through. He really does enjoy the combo of the Righteous Glory and the Rylai. Speed himself up, slow them down, and play these kind of skirmish heavy games where you are chasing down people and, and utilizing your damage that is going to really shine through in these extended fights. Will mean that Leandri's damage is going to be ridiculous when it comes in next item as well. So Doinby with the extra health from that as well and the fact that you can shred health 
Clawpaws, certainly going to mean that Doinby's going to be a tanky man and certainly a threat on this map as well. I also just love it into something like a Gangplank because normally Gangplank successfully disengages from Rise so easily. You prep a keg and then you just eat the oranges when you get that empowered CC. However, certainly is going to be in range of being chased down now that the itemization has come across. I feel like itemization is something that looks to be solved. However, potential Splice. trade. Splice might just be going for the Baron here. You know, This is a, a pretty big commitment. Um, warp. FPX going to get to the mid lane at least as Splice took way too long to start off off this Baron, you can see FPX know exactly what's going on as they have the Rift Scuttle vision. Splice are going to back away, get themselves into this brush as the cage. Not going to be successful there coming out from Kobe. But Atlas, it's not only that, it's the fact that they don't have great Baron damage at this stage of the game. This is only a two item Tristana. Humanoid is not the member that is accelerated in the game. He's like 50 CS behind the clock of where he would probably want to be right now. You can see the lack of teleport also hurting him by not being able to pick up all these side lane farms. So I do feel like that is a slower Baron than Splice might have thought they had at this stage of the game. Yeah, certainly a possibility. And the use of the Realm Warp there also critical to kind of shorten the window that they had to actually take that. So, you know, FBX successfully do navigate that situation and grab themselves a dragon here. Still sitting behind, though, and items are coming through. Zeal now on there for the Tristana, getting close to that critical three items that you talked about earlier with the Rapid Fire. But the Essence Reaver plus the Triforce done for Vizichachi means he's sitting on max CDR, and you can become stronger and stronger in these team fights because he's going for this AD heavy build that scales incredibly well into the late game. However, I know I keep going back to it, but Doinby is now nearly at five completed items as far as solo carries gone and the way he's been able to navigate this game. 2-0-4 on his rise. He's going to be the late game first out of everyone on the map despite his team being 3,000 gold down and I feel like the changes to Ryze's kit meant that he is now a much better team fight than he was in the past and certainly has the possibility to take over this game. The highest level in the game as well as we have a look at total gold he's second just behind Kobe as well who's 2-1-4 uh, and four and has had a great game on this Glacial Augment Viger. Splice though still will have control it just feels like slowly but surely FPX is shifting the onus back into their camp. It feels like they are so threatening with Doinby at the helm. Splice now once again starting off this Baron. They are flirting with it over and over again, trying to get themselves into Ooh. the best position possible. Crisp is spotted by that. Spooky ghosts, yeah, are going to come in. The Glacial Augment and immediately Splice going to dive on it. Everyone avoids the Solar Flare and the cage is just too much for the support on FPX's side. And once again, really well set up. We keep mentioning it, but Kobe's utility in this game is so high and that means that the Baron Force now is available. Teleport will have to be burned here. Yeah. 50% health bar now onto this Baron. You can see that Splice do want to turn if they find anyone. They don't want to get go over for the, the 50-50, but it looks like they might just have to as Gimgoon already prepped the ultimate. Looking to try and get in there. We've seen this before. There was Tien early into this pick. Oh! Somehow the burst didn't work out, and now the dive bomb comes in. The shotgun into the back line, and there goes LWX. The fade away on the Void Seeker as well as Kobe. Hit by the Sonic Wave and destroyed. And LWX writes all the wrongs of day number one, is able to come in, pick up the triple kill, and they will push their way into the base. The wheels fall off for Splice in the 4v5. They get ace, they lose the Baron. I thought and you were going to say FBS. lose the base. That would have been the, the rhyme there, Isaac. You were so <laughs> close as Doinby cleans up the inner turret on the bottom side of the map. There is one more inner remaining, and FPX have flipped this game on its head now at 3,000 gold lead. Let's see how it all happens. And Tien's patient. He doesn't take the first Q, and you can see that it looks like they're burning important cooldowns. The zone control is there, but finally multiple areas, and the kick heard round the world through three members gets the knock up on Tristana and allows the damage dealers to unload onto Splice. Yeah, Doe and B flies in, LWX flies in, and saving that ultimate to the perfect moment. Tien even threading the queue around here to get the ace onto Kabe. So well played, and FPX knows they needed a fight like that. The coaching staff so excited, knowing what it would mean if they were to go down 0-2 in the group. That was like a yes, and then... No. It did look okay from the beginning, well so I can understand. I mean, there's no other real way to say it because things didn't quite work out for Splice, but they're not going to lose their base. 
It's not even going to get broken here as inhibitor turrets are still going to stand. And I think that zero is very glaring only on the splice side. Yeah, and I mean, the question for me is, is, is why did Splice 50-50? Why didn't they just turn to fight? You're in the 5v4. You've been doing so well the whole game. Oh, why wow. Kill Lee Sin. He's in the back of the pit. He couldn't get out anymore. He already safeguarded over. Yeah. So I certainly one they're going to be wanting back, but they are not out of the game just yet. They are heavily behind now off of what was an incredible swing in gold. I mean, look at the Baron power play. That is absurd. 7,600 gold already, and it's going to get bigger. This is one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. And yep. whilst they're not out of the game, their job becomes so much more difficult because that's a level 18 rise that is at five and a half items. And Viger is so much easier to play when you have an area of the map to set up around. Now it's going to be Doinby's real house. Rotate them around. You can see they're playing three lanes right now, even getting Renekton down bottom, despite the fact that no teleport is available. So as long as they don't get set caught right now, it's going to be very easy to break into this base. Yeah, and some of these defensive items just make it a more difficult job for Kave as well to find that big cage. QSS there for LWX. You see the Banshees fail as well for Dome B, so that's going to be have to be poked off. And, you know, LWX has more of an ability to fly into that back line, knowing if he does even get caged up, he's going to have the QSS to remove that. And, and while you can put out incredible damage on the Vigar, you can also die almost instantaneously to either of these carries. As so Dombey just throws out the Realm Warp, just faking, heading towards this mid lane. But yeah, went for the Banshee's Veil instead of the Leandris. Wants to make sure that he can continue running at all of the CC that Splice has available to them. That first one not going to be as effective. And then he's going to buy himself a pretty cool hat. So this wizard is going to be very strong come six items. And I feel like that's very disciplined play from, our, uh, from the FPX lineup. Obviously, in a best of one, you have to make sure that you don't give the lead back. And this was a barren power play used to knock down all the outer turrets and regain Dragon and Spawn Elder. Gives them another area of the map to be able to fight around. They didn't want to gamble with going for that all-out play. And you have to say that, you know, despite being a young lineup, they have been able to claw their way back into this one well, and now see whether, let's judge them on seeing how well they set up to break this. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, sometimes in, in these lineups, when you're having a ref tournament, having one big play like that can inject the confidence that you need uh, to, to really up your level. And, you know, with some of these big luxury items coming through, you know, you have the GA now on TN, so he can be more willing to kind of throw himself into that back line and try to kick a carry in at the expense of his life. And we'll see what FPX does with the lead. And you can see, like, at the top of your screen, you see the 0-1 for FPX and the 1-0 for Spice. And you might be thinking, well, FPX should be the weaker team. That is not how we should be looking at this match. Because FPX are coming in as China's first seed. They had an amazing season. And yes, they have a unique play style. Yes, they play around some really weird stuff that Doinby likes to throw out. Some dark technology, if you will. But they have done it with aplomb for most of the year. And they deserve the respect and are finally showing us here in their second game at World. And that's why it was never going to really be LWX's performance that sealed the deal for me on this team. It was going to be whether Doinby can have the standout performances that he needs. LWX is just a cleanup crew. He's a janitor that takes care of business after everyone else has thrown the party. And that's what we saw in the last team fight. TN starting it off, Doinby with the big burst damage. And then it's just about the Kaiser being able to take down the low t uh, health members. Yeah, he clicks on heads pretty well, does LWX. Pretty good at being that, uh, that farmer for the last remaining kills, and it's all about Doinby and how he can pair with his jungler. Because you're right, Tien is a fantastic player and has shown already in this series what he can do on this Lee Sin. And I think we can now expect FPX to start looking to get aggressive. Uh, full Banshee's Veil bought up by LWX. The death cap completed there for Doinby. So, you know, this is, this is about as strong as they are going to get at this point of the game. And Tien now looking for a flank here. That Realm Warp, it's gonna be straight into the baby cage, but Humanoid all by himself and destroyed. Doinby picks up that kill comfortably as Tien not going to be a afflicted by the Lee Syndrome, just leaves the Sonic Wave there. They'll take their pick on the Tristana and now Splice, four versus five. They get the hook on a Tien. Is the combo going to be enough? He has a GA and doesn't even need it as Xerxe has to go into his Zonya's crisp right into the middle of the fight. But LWX is free hitting, able to get the damage down, double kill already. Doiby only missing a bit of his health bar and Gimgoon is 
a one-man wrecking crew. FPX dominate the fight. The hook lands, but that is not one you wanted to follow. And that is a huge fight for them. You can see LWX immediately running mid lane to try to push up this minion wave. We'll see how much they want to go for. At minimum, they take mid and hip and can go back to the Baron. At maximum, they can try to continue the push here as Kabe is still dead. It looks like they're posturing for the end. Yeah, it looks like they're thinking about it. They don't want this game to go on for too much longer. 20 seconds on Kabe, but that barrel was fantastic. Oh. The game back! They collect Humanoid once again! to go three members of Splice are still alive. Jian is going to get taken down, but it's the Nexus. The one thing standing between FPX and a 1-1 scoreline, and they'll finish it. Redemption for the first seed from China. And redemption for the carry players of FPX. A much better mid to late game, and they show that they are superstars, that they're not afraid of the big stage, and they take their first win of Worlds 2019. Feels like they have finally arrived after that one. Doe and Bia and LWX in particular showcasing some incredible team fighting down the stretch. But you have to say, from the Splice point of view, it felt like they were doing everything right until that Baron. And that is going to be the moment that they are looking back to constantly. Yeah, and it's uh, yellow and black colors, and it is a Baron throw. This is something that I know you, Isaac, are pretty comfortable with <laughs> seeing these before. But that Baron was a huge problem for Splice. They'll be bot reviewing, they'll look back, they'll be like, guys, this is the moment that we have to fix. And I actually think that works in Splice's favor because they know that those sort of bi big mi mishaps are the problem and it's not necessarily how they play out the early stage of the game. But let's head over to the...